Hello YouTube! This is my theory for Fallout 4. It's a pretty interesting theory, but it contains spoilers for everything. So if you have not completed the game, if you have not exhausted the content that you are interested in, if you have not at least been through the Institute, this video will just confuse you because you need to know at least the possible endings of the main storyline. Uh, I will go into them and I'll give a brief summary of what happens. Um, originally I had a really long video, it was over an hour long, and I decided that I needed to scrap it, start, o start over from scratch because there was just too much going on in my video. Um, so I'm going to give a brief synopsis of the ending that I took, which is to join the Institute, which is how I got uh, to this theory. So, <clears throat> that said, the theory is that you are a synth. And I'm going to present uh, significant evidence towards this, and you can make your own determination, um, but there's some pretty damning stuff. So, that said, and I will now spoil the ending for the Institute. When you go with the Institute, um, you, you go into the Institute, you find out that Sean, your son, is actually much older than you thought, that you had been refrozen after uh, the events depicted in your memory, and you can also see in Kellogg's memory, and that uh, 60 years passed, and then uh, you're released again, <clears throat> and you find Sean within the Institute. He's, you know, a uh, pretty old man, um, and he wants you to take over the Institute for him in his place because he has cancer and is going to die. And so he sends you on a series of missions, and if you go with the Institute, by the end, you are in charge of the Institute, supposedly. And at that point, you can interact with the young boy, Sean Synth. And this is where I get into why this theory started, because the Sean Synth says some really interesting stuff that got me on this path and led me to a lot of other supporting evidence for this theory, that you are in fact a synth. The others, they told me to stop worrying. They said you can't be killed, that you'd always come back to me. What, what? The others told me to stop worrying. They said you can't be killed, that you'll always come back to me. Now, you might say that that's just the other heads of the Institute trying to reassure the Sean synth that you know everything's going to be okay but that's not the case they know something they know that you can't die he says a series of other things like sometimes i can remember sometimes i can't does that happen to you these are issues with synth memory and they relate to your character in a very specific way which i'm going to get into but he says some other things first like uh when people die, can they become synths? Are they alive again or, or still gone? He, he asks a lot of really poignant questions that all point to one thing. And then the last one is, if humans make sense, who makes humans? Like you and me. He thinks he's human and he thinks you're human. And that's where I, I was like, okay, clearly something is going on here. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the meta of game design. And there are certain games that have a huge impact on the mentality of game designers. And, the, and one that had a, a major impact on, on game design was Bioshock, Ken Levine's Bioshock. And there's, I'm going to spoil that too. So if you haven't played that, <laughs> go ahead and pause or skip ahead. Um, <clears throat> in Bioshock, there's a moment where there's an explanation for why you are doing all of the things you are doing. And it's explained by you are actually you've been in you've been controlled by someone using the phrase uh, would you kindly and uh, Andrew Ryan says you know a, a, a slave obeys a man chooses and this gave a reason for everything that you did in the game that didn't necessarily make sense. The reason you were violent with all these people, the reason you did bad things and killed all these people when you might not have wanted to do those things. And that had a huge impact on the way that game designers thought about narrative in games. And it's, it's here in Fallout 4. The reasons you do things, the reasons that people are interacting with you and that you are the center of this story, there is a reason. 
And that reason is that you are the Institute's next, you're the fourth gen synth. You're not a third gen, you're improved upon in a way that uh, none of the other synths have. Now you have all the basics that the Gen 3 synths have. Uh, and let's, let's go through them real quick. It was probably just a glitch. Hello. The find all the control software. The theoretical limits are maybe broken. just a limb twitching, perhaps. But her eyes were moving as well. Involuntary twitching and rapid eye movements while sleeping can only mean one thing, Max. You just don't want to admit to yourself what it is. If you're about to launch into one of your impassioned speeches about artificial sentience and machines with souls, don't bother. I've heard enough of them by now. I can write them down from memory. But we can't just ignore the question. If a sim can dream, why can't it have a soul? And if a sim has a soul, then it is a living person by every standard we can measure. Of course it is far more comfortable to think of them as machines, so we can do what we want with them. If you disapprove of the work we do here, Dr. Renee, you know where to find the teleport. Now just a moment. I never said that. I'm simply trying to open everyone's eyes to new possibilities. Well, it's an unwanted I can't imagine living on the surface. We're men of sight. It sounds like a nightmare. We do well to remember that. With our third generation sense, we've improved upon humanity. So I picked that scene for a very specific reason. It captures everything about the Gen 3 synths that, uh, that we know. They're, they're manufactured, but they're manufactured from basically biological parts. So they've got a skeleton, they've got all of the biological components that humans do. They've got muscle tissue, they've got blood and, and fiber and everything like that. They can eat, they can sleep, they can dream. And by all accounts, they are human. So. There's a there's a couple elements where uh, another scientist will say, well, they don't get diseases and blah, blah, blah. They can get diseases because you can't say that something can never get a disease if it's made from biological components, because obviously, even if you have a, a really impressive immune system, viruses will always find a way, germs will always find a way. And that's why you can get sick in uh, if you go to vault, uh, is it 80 something, 75, I think. Uh, and you can get that mole rat disease because it's a particularly virulent virus that um, would kill a normal human. You just minus 10 hit points for the rest of the game until you get it, if you don't get it cured. So for, for all intents and purposes, you can pass as human. Um, but there are certain aspects of gameplay that are explained away by you being a synth and not a normal human. And let's let's go into those a little bit. So first, there's that you can't be killed component. And what are they talking about? Well, they're talking about saving and loading the game. Every time you save the game, you create a image of your memories and everything, and it's uploaded to the Institute. And then uh, when you die, guess what? You just load that game and then are teleported exactly where you were as though nothing happened. <laughs> so, I mean, it's the perfect explanation for how a save load system is compatible with the, the universe that your character is in. If you're a synth, yeah, you could uh, take a look at this clip. Doctor, my, my friend here needs your help. Oh, I'm not a mechanic. What could she possibly want from me? Oh. This doctor can help me? Greetings, doctor. I wish to download my data and core programming into a human brain. You... you want what? Is she serious? Curie has a lot of pre-war research data, but she can't continue her work as a robot. Why not? There are fundamental limitations in my robotic systems, I have no capacity for the human trait of inspiration. I've never considered anything like you're proposing. It's an interesting problem. The memories wouldn't be hard. We translate those from the brain to computers and back all the time here. It's how the loungers work. Her personality, though. All the extra pieces of robotic program decision making. A normal organic brain wouldn't know what to do with them. A synth brain, on the other hand, well, it's already somewhere between the two. So it is possible, then? Likely, even. We just need a synth. 
and I may be able to help with that. So there you go. Memory transfer, not a problem. Personality transfer, you you do it with Curie. Spoiler, but <laughs> and and they the institute can do it with you. So the save load system is simply how they explain uh, is explained away by you being a synth, and and it's brilliant <laughs> in in how how we just accept these systems, but now there's an explanation for it and it fits in with the whole narrative of the game. It's it's absolutely genius. So at this point, you're probably asking, yeah, but but why? Why would they do that? And all of all the explanation to that is entirely the hubris of father and his connection to his dead parents. So I'm gonna show you a clip from that and I'm gonna explain how Everything that you see in the game, as far as your memories, uh, post the initial uh, introduction of the game, uh, they're fabricated, they're staged, and, and I can prove it, I'll show you. <laughs> you know, in all my years, I've never set foot outside the Institute. Not once, since the day they brought me here. I've never had a reason, but now, this just confirms the truth I've always known. The Commonwealth is dead. There's no future here. The only hope for humanity lies below. It's not so bad, really. People manage. Perhaps. But at a cost too great to be worth it. Standing here... I'm reminded of how fortunate I am that I was spared a life in this wasteland. I know that to you, I was kidnapped from that vault. In truth, the Institute rescued me. Both of us, really. But why refreeze me? As a failsafe, of course. I was the perfect candidate. An infant with uncorrupted DNA. But if something were to go wrong, if I died, well, the Institute realized a contingency plan was prudent. Another source of pre-war DNA, preferably related to their primary subject. It only made sense that my parents should fill that role. So you were kept alive and safe within the vault. I'll admit, when I had you released from Vault 111, I had no expectations that you'd survive out here in all this. To not only do so, but manage to find me. To infiltrate the Institute itself. Extraordinary. So it was you. You let me out? Yes. It was my decision. Certainly it was no longer necessary to keep you suspended. I... Well, I suppose I wanted to see what would happen. An experiment of sorts. Would the Commonwealth corrupt you? As it has everything else. Would you even survive? Perhaps most curious to me. Would you... After all this time... Attempt to find me? And now I know the answer. All this is to you? All I am to you? Just another experiment? No, that's not all. But still, I'm glad it turned out the way it did. Soon, I hope, I hope you'll understand. Everything I've done has been for the future. Okay, I know that's a lot to parse, but the important thing to remember here is that Father is a master manipulator. This guy lies all the time. And what I, what I need you to understand is that the idea that he, was, uh, that he was taken by the Institute for the Young Corrupted DNA, okay, that's legitimate, but there's a problem. The problem is he got cancer, an aggressive form of cancer, and he dies because of that cancer. So ultimately, he realizes that humanity cannot be preserved by preserving the current state of humanity 
the only way to preserve humanity is to make something better, something that can't get cancer, something that doesn't have to sleep, that can that can do its job 24-7 nonstop and will never die. Like you. <laughs> you don't need to sleep. You can if you want. You can have pro procreational sex if you want. You don't have to. We don't know if that will end up in a baby. We don't know how far that biology goes, but maybe it goes that far. It's it's hard to tell at this point. And But more importantly, you can't get cancer. You can't die of the basic things that humans can die of, especially in this, you know, post-apocalyptic world. That's That's a pretty common occurrence. And the only hope lies within the Institute for creating that, and that is the synths. And that's what Sean or father is getting at here. So the important things to note is that, yeah, you are an experiment to him. You are a synth that he released, but you are special from the other synths. And what is that special thing that makes you different from the other synths? You have free will and you've, you're, you start with free will. As far as you know, you're a human being. You can make whatever choices you want. And I mean, that's that's an important component of the game is that you the player get to choose how, how things go down and in that way brilliant that's freaking brilliant because yeah you are a synth and ultimately he could have installed things to control you but then it wouldn't be a true experiment would it how would how do you ensure the future of humanity is the synth if they if they don't work with free will right and that's why you are the only synth with no shutdown code and <laughs> they can't shut you down and that's why father can't stop you if you turn against him now there are several instances in the game where he gives you orders he'll he he i don't have a clip i'm sorry but uh so for example when you when he says you have to to defeat the railroad you have to kill everyone in the railroad and if you say no i don't want to do that he says well i'm sorry but that's an order now you can choose not to do that because you have free will, unlike in Bioshock, for example, where if they say, would you kindly, you have to do whatever he says until you break that programming. Sorry, spoiler. Anyways, but here you have free will throughout, so you can always deny him whatever he's asking for. And that's why the, the fact that you're a synth is just so genius. Now I said I was gonna prove that, uh, that things were staged, so let's do that now. Initiated cryogenic stasis Suspended. Vault computers are still working. That's good. Checking through the logs. Hopefully it's all... Just... find it. Pod C6. Down the hall near the end. This is the one. Here. Open it. <laughs> is it okay? Almost. Everything's going to be fine. Okay? Come here. No. Come here, baby. Wait. No. I got it. Let the boy go. I'm only gonna tell you once. I'm not giving you son! God damn it. Get the kid out of here and let's go. At least we still have the backup. Cryogenic sequence. Reinitiate. I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but uh, I never liked to. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving her alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft, pre-war vault dweller. Even if she somehow got thawed out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. Did you see that? Did you see them pause? They're staying just out of view of where the pods of you and your husband would be. 
It's so blatant. It can't be a mistake. They wait. They draw. He draws his gun. The scientist moves in first a bit tentatively, kind of looking over at your pod, and then moves in and points at this one, blah, blah, blah. It's so obviously staged from a physicality point of view. And, and you might say, oh, well, that's just uh, you know a mistake in how they animate. Are you kidding me? That stuff was mo-capped. They did every movement in there was so clearly done on purpose that there is no doubt in my mind that that was staged. So let's look at some of the things he says and some of the things he's, he was thinking at the time that this event occurred. So number one, you're not the primary subject in his memory. That is the person who gets killed when they take the, the, the baby away. That is the primary subject. And you're the backup, right? Now, maybe that's part of the manipulation is that they want you to think you're the backup. But I think actually that the primary subject was supposed to be the your spouse. And Kellogg killed them because he's a psycho. And, you know, father regrets that because he wanted both his parents alive. Maybe the happy ending to father was that there would be a family unit at the end. The father, the mother and the Sean Synth son. I think that was his ultimate plan. But Kellogg screws it up by killing one of the, the, the primary subject. Oops. And note that it wasn't in his memory. It's not the baby that is the primary subject. It's your spouse and you are the backup subject in his memory. So clearly everything is staged for the primary and secondary subject, right? Okay, we got more. Then he says the most unimaginable thing in this whole thing if you believe that this is real i'm glad i didn't have to kill the kid he's talking about the baby i'm not saying i haven't done it before but i'm glad i didn't have to do it because it's staged this is all to set up a revenge scenario for you to go find your child and ultimately meet up with the institute and father your real son i mean you're a synth so he's not your literal son but the he, he is he is your real son based on your memories and who you're supposed to be, right? So, like, it's so clearly staged. Um, I, I guess if he had killed the kid, I'm not sure exactly what they would have done, but he could have said, oh, no, I, I'm actually your son and I'm alive. So, and he would have showed up after you killed Kellogg, presumably, or something along those lines. I don't know what their backup plan in that respect was, but... Clearly, in this memory from Kellogg, he states himself he's glad he didn't have to kill the kid. He might have. He could have. And now you're saying, oh, well, what if he had just, uh, he, maybe he killed the kid and then knocks out the father, or maybe he kills both of them and he takes the, the backup subject for the source of pre-war DNA. No, because the primary subject, again, is your spouse and the backup subject is you. The primary subject is not Sean, not the baby. It's all staged. This is all staged to set up this revenge scenario. So now here's some evidence that this, uh, about my version of the timeline in which the staged uh, killing of your spouse is actually much more recent. So in Kellogg's memories, they go to great lengths to show him transitioning throughout the years where he's got different pieces of armor and stuff. Every memory has different pieces of armor, except here he is in 2227, when at the supposed kidnapping of, of Sean, right? And now, 60 years later, here he is in the present day. Nothing changed? Are you kidding me? They went through painstaking details, changing different pieces of armor and his looks and everything, and he doesn't change in 60 years? No way. So at this point, you're probably asking, is there any definitive evidence that uh, it's, it's staged beyond Kellogg's memory? Because Kellogg's memory could be manipulated or whatever. Yes. Here's, here's, here's what happened. All of the, the staging of the memories, and including your, the, the staging of your release from the vault, is based on Sean's mother's memories. So 
if you think about it, it makes more sense if you're the institute and you go to the vaults and you find a source of pre-war DNA, you don't just grab one, you grab them all. It makes no sense to leave any of them behind. You, you grab them all. So they probably grabbed every single body in the vault, took it to the institute. Maybe they're still on ice somewhere. Maybe not. Maybe they all died. So, so here's how I know it's based on your mother's memories of what happened. Because anything that took place after you're frozen, uh, there's inconsistencies. So if you go to the overseer's uh, terminal, you'll see an event in there where he talks about the person in C3, that's the pod in, in the same room as you, that she has heart palpitations. But if you look at the computer terminal, and if you look in your memory of who is in C3, it's Mr. Callahan. That means that somewhere between you being frozen and the rest of the people being frozen, Mr. Callahan was moved to another uh, pod or potentially taken out of the pod and a woman was placed into pod C3. But because it's all staged and because it's all based on the memories of Sean's mother, everything is set up to look like she remembers it from the events uh, leading up to her freezing. And that's as simply as I can put it, why I know for a fact that it's staged and ultimately that you are a synth. So just to be clear, there's even more supporting evidence for this. For example, uh, there's references to the old man in Kellogg's memory. He refers to him as, he refers to the lead of the Institute as the old man, both during the events of the kidnapping, the kidnapping of Sean, uh, and also when you see the next scene in his memory where it's the modern where it's supposedly a few days ago theoretically he also again refers him to the old man when you look at the file on the desk so maybe he always refers to the head of the institute as the old man but more than likely it's the same guy which means that father had to be alive during the events of what in Kellogg's memory is the kidnapping of Sean, which means that it has to be staged. So there's there's even more evidence than that. I, but I'm trying to keep this video to half an hour, so I've, I don't wanna go, uh, there's so much more. Believe me, there's so much supporting evidence for this theory that it's absolutely undeniable. Please dispute me in the comments below if you think you found something that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm wrong and that you are not a synth comment below and I will post a response video to it with evidence that that proves that uh, that counters whatever evidence you present I will I promise there's so much that I can absolutely prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are a synth so um, I hope you like this theory uh, please like and subscribe uh, I plan to do more um, I, I like to do very well thought out videos so it takes a lot of time to put these together so I hope you can appreciate that and I'm trying to get them under under an hour. The original video for this had so much evidence. It was like two hours long. It was way too long. I got it to a half hour, so I'm pretty happy. Uh, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Dr. Volkart, can you see to my injuries? Hmm. Let's see what's wrong with you. I have to admit, the third generation sensor really something. I've got just the thing.